Welcome back to another episode of the Successful Driver Podcast back in the clear, simple used truck buying studio today and talking to Jason Cowan, the president of Silver Creek Transportation. Jason, I am so excited to get to spend a little time with you. Thank you for giving us some time today. Hey, man, glad to be here. Glad to be uh, a part of what's this exciting time in our industry. Yeah, and, and a part of a wonderful industry that has obviously been uh, been very good to you. And, you know, you've got a unique story. I'd love to kind of just hear, and we, and we like to ask people that we talk to, you know, just your, in, you know, your, your, uh, your background in the industry, how you got started, how you got to this point. Uh, all right. Uh, I bought my first truck when I was about 24, sometime in the early 90s, like 94, 95. And, and I guess like most young guys that want to get started in the trucking business, you know, you're enamored with the trucks. That's why we, that's why we choose to do what we do. We like the lifestyle, like the freedom, you know, want to have your own truck, do those things. And, and so that part of our story is not like uh, many others who had uh, gone the same path. Uh, we had a vision early on that we wanted to build a different kind of trucking company uh, that would with where people that were part of our team wouldn't be just a number or a name. And you hear that cliche a lot, but it was something that we really wanted to uh, put inside our core principles as a company. So we spent the first several years just building uh, the owner operator base, making some connections, building relationships. And then we started on a growth path that brought us to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we always tried to hold back to is say, we want to stay that same company vision that we started with. We're going to put people over profits, people over, over products. We're going to take care of our team members. We're going to take care of our customers. And we're going to have a little different approach to this. That's not necessarily just, uh, just asset money driven, but that we could actually make a difference with our company. Uh, it's about a legacy that, that we want to leave that I've, to cast our team members that vision every day. Well, Jason, I want to take it all the way back to when you first kind of got in the industry, you bought your first truck. Um, what were those first couple of years like on uh, the road that you were, you know, as you were learning? Right. Well, we started local. Uh, we, we purchased, uh, there was a gentleman that was retiring in our area that had uh, uh, some aggregate trucks. We bought some dump trucks from him. And our first couple of years, once we realized that as he retired, maintenance might not have been one of his strong suits. So uh, <laughs> basically I spent all day in the truck and then all night underneath it, making sure it was ready to go. And just doing the things that you have to do to be successful that you never give up. Uh, even, you know, those first couple of years are a lot of learning curves. You may think that coming from a company driver position that you have a lot of knowledge and, and those, and that's probably true. And those things were helpful. But one of the things that we learned early on is that we had to look past the trucks and look at the business of trucking. Mm -hmm. You know, why did we get in it? You know, we liked the trucks. We wanted that lifestyle. We wanted to be able to, to have our own trucks. But we quickly learned if you don't learn the business aspect of it, there's not going to be any trucks to have. And so mm -hmm. um, how do you begin to budget and how do you begin to plan for failures? How do you begin to plan for slow times for you know, you might have noticed last couple of years, we've kind of had some curveballs in the economy thrown at us. How, yeah. how are we prepared for that so that, you know, when they come, we're not, you know, going to be out of business. We won't be able to stay in the game. So we spent the first couple of years really trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to stay in the game? How are we going to, you know, spec new equipment? What can we do to make the most of the equipment that we have? And, um, you know, those years were a little different than what we're seeing now, sure. you know, to get customers and things, you really had to, to work a little harder. The freight, you know, uh, I think about 25 years ago, there were still uh, probably didn't have the driver situation that we have today didn't have the capacity situation we have today. So you had to work at it a little more. And so how many, how many, how many trucks did you guys start with? Was it one, three, five? And then, and then was, was, how many did you start with? We started with two and then we went to two or two went to three to five and within a couple of years we're up to we 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 grew to probably eight to ten trucks and stayed there for quite a while mm -hmm. and, uh, and then decided to do one of the things that at Silver Creek that we do we try to do things that maybe other companies either don't want to do or that's something that we can specialize in and it just helps 
and our niche, we, um, like I said, when I look back at that time with just a few trucks, you know, we might go to a shipper and say, hey, can you uh, let us haul some of your freight? And when you tell them, you know, I have, you know, two, three, four trucks, they weren't really concerned with dealing with you. And so, you know, I'd go back to them and say, okay, how can we get in here? And I would just tell them, hey, here's my card. If you have a driver fall off a load, if you have a truck, you know, leave you on the dock, give me a call and let me see what I can do. And so for many years, I think we had the reputation of being the guy that could pick the ball up. And so uh, through that growth, that's what we did for several years. We would just, someone drop a load at a factory that was around us, they call us. <clears throat> we began to help Then our reputation, you know, became a little more solidified. So we became the guy that could do anything, you know, hey, you need a machine move, we can move it. You know, general freight, we can move it. You know, something like that. And uh, so we were, I guess, I won't say struggling for our identity in the early days, we were just the guys that could do anything. And that's how we survived for so many years because they knew they could call us. And so out of that, we have pretty much focused on three lines of what we do in our business now. And we've tried to still keep that same philosophy that we can, we can figure that out. So how many trucks do you have today? Uh, we're right at the 30 mark. I think 29 is where we were uh, the other day. So mm. uh, right at the 30 mark, we've got more coming in this year. Growth, you know, uh, is we're hoping it's going to be good for 22 and, and those things are going to happen for us. And, and so the changes that we've seen between the one truck and the 30 truck are just, yeah. you know, a phenomenal mark. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's things that are great about our, the time we're in and things that are challenging. And sure. so, uh, but yet, what we keep looking at, because we get asked that question about how many trucks do you want? How many are you going to have? And we want to grow uh, our business to the size where it's always maintaining what our core values and what our principles are. We still want the quality over the quantity. And as long as we can maintain that, we don't care, you know, to grow the company. So uh, what was the biggest growing pain back then? as you were building your business, you have to, you have to pick one, Jason, I'm holding you to one, the <laughs> biggest growing pain you had to experience, uh, when starting your business. Oh, capital cash flow and capital mm -hmm. was, is, is the hardest part. It's, you know, that old saying that cash flow is king, you know, how to yeah. watch. And that was the biggest thing to say, okay, when we have the good times, how do we put it back to the lean times mm -hmm. and how do we begin to pr have those cash projections? And one of the biggest helps that we had, uh, in my opinion, to help us do that was that we, we began to incorporate our transportation management software. Mm. And then we could see, because I think so many times we, we come into business with our own ideas, our own beliefs, things that we may believe that once we analyze and look at the numbers may not be true. Like we may look at a lane and think, oh, wow, that's a great lane. We've done it for years. It's been great to us. And then when you actually analyze that lane, they, wow, we're not, you know, the profit margin on that lane is not what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Should we be doing something else? Right. Uh, I think that with technology, we're able to track those things better. And one of the things that uh, we looked at, even as a small company that we would do, is that we wanted to have the vision that we're a small company that thinks bigger. Mm -hmm. And so we would implement things maybe a little ahead of our time so that when we got, you know, when we were at nine trucks, we implemented some things so that we knew when we got to 30 trucks, we don't have to worry about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, now I can look at my team and say, hey, we're going to add five trucks this year. They're rocking with it. They don't even, mm -hmm. they don't even have to question what we're doing, how we're doing it. And, um, you know, they just know what to do. Mm -hmm. And because we've been working at it for, you know, for several years now, so. But, right. you know, you didn't go from one to 30 trucks overnight. It, it, you know, it's been over the course of the last nearly, you know, 30 years. What, what have the instincts told, like, you know, what is it instinct that kind of tells you when it's time to expand? Is it opportunity? What are the, what are the things when you're looking to add trucks, expand your market, expand your business? What have been the things that have told you it's time? Yeah. Well, and that's a great question because what we, what we look for is that opportunity. Does this fit? within what is a company or business model that we want to go you know is this something that's going to be sustainable long time uh you know long term for us is it going to be something that that's going to be beneficial for our company there's lots of different avenues out there and especially the last few years you can go any direction you want to go 
and they're straight, but what is it inside of our company? You know, can we get the quality drivers that we want if we had this equipment? Will this, you know, will this lane help us? Mm -hmm. Is this the type of business, you know, that fits within uh, our customer base? And we've tried some things that we're like, mm, that's not really us. And uh, we'll go away from it. So a lot of times we'll test the waters with, you know, maybe we rent some equipment, rent some trailers, try something out, see if it works before we, we go all in. We know some of the things that we do that work for us. So if that business comes up, we just, you know, uh, we pursue it. Uh, a lot of the things I think one as when you're smaller and when you're, uh, you know, when you're more like Rocky Balboa, when you have that eye of the tiger and you're hungry, you tend to go after things that, you know, uh, you don't back up and sharpen your pencil and make sure, hey, is this a solid business decision? And so what we've done now, we put things and people in place. I've got people behind me that say, hey, here are your blind spots, Jason. This is what you're missing. So as we look to this business, what's going to be profitable for the company? How can we go forward? And, you know, a lot of times uh, just really work the data out on it. And that, that helps us to make those decisions. Hi, right, Jason. We ask this to everybody that we talk to. Uh, I'd love to know what makes a successful truck driver in your opinion? Uh, I think a person that enjoys what they do mm. uh, and that has integrity. I, I don't think that you can replace integrity. One of our mottos is that we, uh, we hire character and we train skill. Mm. And if we have someone that in our organization uh, that loves what they do, that we can work with, then that makes the best team member from us, whether it be a truck driver or whether, you know, it'd be someone in the back office. Um, so many times, you know, uh, we look at, at our nation's drivers and they're, um, you know, we want to try to help make their life better because one, I know the struggle because I've been on that side of the steering wheel. Right. The second thing is, you know, I want them to have the quality of life that, that they want. And, you know, we'll have, we'll, we may have men or women come in here and they'll use a phrase on me. They'll say, well, I'm just a truck driver. And that's the first thing we begin to work on. Nobody is just anything. We all have a purpose. We all have a destiny. We all have a calling on our life that, that we're here for while we're here on this earth. And so as, a, you know, as the vision for this business, how can I help? A driver fulfill his destiny. He has, you know, he or she has a family at home, they have people that love them, they have things they want to do, they have plans when they retire. So as a company, how can I help them achieve that while they help us as a company yeah. uh, to grow? And so I think when we look for, you know, we really shy away from the folks that pick up the phone and say, hey, do you guys need drivers? And the next question is, what do you pay? Because you know, I don't mean to be harsh, but, you know, the guys on the low end of the pay scale need drivers. The guys on the high end of the pay scale need drivers. So we have to realize this thing, even though it's about how much money we do take home each week, there's got to be some more components to it other than, you know, what the paycheck is. So let's explore that. We're going to pay you well, but then we're also going to give you things. We realize that with technology, we can give you things through, uh, through our training videos through the, the things that we do every month to help you have a better life. You know, what are the goals that you're wanting to reach and how can we help you do that while you work here, uh, you know, with our company? All right, Jason, I'm, I'm going to ask you this last question. I just want to know, you know, if you're going to give advice to someone that might've been in your shoes, you know, uh, back when, when you first started, what's, what's one piece of advice you can give to someone looking to maybe take, you know, go from one truck, to two, one truck to three. What's 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 the advice you want to give for someone just wanting to take that step? I think to realize that it's going to take time to do what uh, you want to do. Don't get into a big hurry. Uh, we see in our industry, I've seen through the years, you know, guys that get uh, begin to get in a hurry and get ahead of themselves. You've got to be able to cash flow and run your business. So if you're going to go from one to two to five to ten. How are you going to do that? How are you going to plan for the good times? How are you going to plan for the bad times? Don't be, don't be scared to make those leaps, but realize, you know, that you have to have a plan because no one wants to work for years. And then all of a sudden something happened and it takes that away from you. Mm -hmm. uh, always try to do 
the right thing with your customers, your vendors, and your team members, I think that comes back to help you uh, exponentially. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so build those relationships. And then just, I think for, for me, just to learn to be uh, a businessman first, you know, the business of trucking, what, what is, you know, how do you read your balance sheet? How do you know when you have, you know, how do you know when you need to take the next step? And uh, those things, I think, will guide you, you know, to make, to make the best decisions that you can to grow. It's a good time. It's a good time to be in our industry. It's a great industry to be in. Yep. And, you know, you a lot of men and women that are out here that are making it happen. And it's just, it's exciting to be able to be a part of it. Jason, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I've, I've genuinely loved getting to hear your perspective. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for sharing your time. I uh, really thank appreciate you. you. Yeah. We appreciate you letting us do it. And uh, we uh, we're excited about what our industry holds. Yeah, absolutely. It's a wonderful industry. That's another ex- episode of the Successful Driver Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you again to Jason Cowan uh, with Silver Creek Transportation. We'll catch you later.